So what people don't understand is that humans are not mice. It is uh, uh, very, very difficult and it has been, it has turned out almost impossible in most cases to translate what we find in mice or some other animals into humans. Uh, the human body is, is extremely complicated and much more complicated than anybody else. Uh, I mean, any other species. So uh, after being introduced to the work of the convoys, I suggested that maybe we can do something similar in humans, uh, but we have to modify it. And I published a hypothesis of how to do that in 2012, I believe. So the idea was instead of suturing another human to, to an older individual, uh, is to change the younger human with a machine. And the machine happens to be a blood uh, cell separator that you saw earlier. This was my suggestion. So the question was, what kind of a replacement fluid shall we use? We can remove the plasma, we know that, but what shall we put back in? And is it important? So as I mentioned before, you know, we have the similarities between autoimmune diseases and older people. And I based on that, uh, my hypothesis, I, I said, if we can treat these, these, these diseases, we can probably treat aging in a, similar, in a similar way. We remove fibrinogen and autoantibodies with the plasmapheresis procedure. As you can see here, we can dramatically can change the level of fibrinogen, for example, during one procedure. So we know that we have a very potent anti-inflammatory effect. And as I mentioned earlier, chronic inflammation is the key to age-related diseases. Another thing that is very important is that we affect actually immunosenescence. Uh, the, the ratio between CD4 uh, and CD8 cells, these are, these are immunocompetent cells that play a major role in uh, every uh, every aspect of the immune system, including autoimmune and immunodeficiency diseases. In autoimmune diseases, we had published a long time ago that the ratio between these two is pretty high. Uh, and it turns out that studies have shown in, in large studies actually that this, the ratio is high in older people. That's yet another similarity between autoimmunity and aging. Uh, we have done studies of autoimmune patients who underwent plasmapheresis, and we have shown that we can reverse the ratio so that the CD4, CD8 ratio uh, <clears throat> drops dramatically after plasmapheresis, as you can see on the red bar here. So the initial idea that there is something in young plasma uh, called to the attention of fresh frozen plasma. So we take plasma, possibly from young people, uh, and we replace the plasma we remove with, uh, with the fresh frozen plasma from young individuals, assuming there's something in it. So in my initial publication, I was very much against that. And uh, the reason for that is, as I showed you earlier, the, the, the uh, use of fresh frozen plasma is associated with a dramatic increase of adverse reactions. And many of you who are interested in this procedure for anti-aging purposes uh, probably don't have any significant disease. You, you just want to be younger and to live longer. So to, to expose healthy people or relatively healthy people to, to severe reactions, and some of these can be deadly actually, it's not, it's not just tingling, it's much more than that, um, I thought was, was unethical. So I was opposed from, from the very beginning to use fresh frozen plasma. Another thing that uh, was discovered by the convoys later on, uh, they developed a, a device that uh, resembles the device we use in humans. And basically this allowed them to not create a parabiosis where you suture the two, the two mice, but take blood from one mouse and infuse it into the other and repeat the experiment the other way around. So what they noticed is that if you took blood from the older mouse and inject it into the younger mouse, the younger mouse became old. 
However, if you do the experiment the other way around and uh, infuse young blood into an old mouse, nothing happens. The old mouse stays old. So this clearly indicated that it is not something in the young blood, but it's the dilution. It's, it's the, the dilution that we create by uh, removing the plasma. So I decided that fresh frozen plasma can be substituted with 5% human albumin, which is made of, from, from human plasma. However, it's processed to a point that there is no danger to infuse it. And in fact, human albumin is considered a pharmaceutical rather than uh, a blood product as fresh frozen plasma is. Uh, in addition to, to being safe, albumin has very significant, powerful uh, antioxidant uh, properties. It is the most powerful antioxidant in the human body. It has an anti-inflammatory properties as well. And uh, interestingly enough, it's a significant immunomodulator. And uh, we published an article that uh, appeared in a journal last, uh, last week, actually, that uh, explains how this whole thing works and why using albumin is, is very relevant in a variety of diseases, including in the aging process and age-related diseases. Uh, here's the article that I was talking about. Uh, it's available probably through me because you, you cannot get it free from the journal, but if you're interested, I'll be happy to send it to you. Uh, this is the article that uh, we published with our first uh, results from the from the use of uh, saline albumin the, in mice as well as in humans. So this is uh, a description of what we first observed both in mice and humans. Uh, again, the article is available online. It's available through me as well. So uh, you're I don't want to go into detail. As you can see here, it's fairly complicated. I will show you what we what we saw in humans uh, in a second. Uh, and again, I will come back to, to this notion that over time, the proteomic profile in humans, as well as in animals, changes. And if we can, if we can bring this, this um, protein collection and, and, and uh, uh, balance back to what it was for, for younger people, then I think we can talk about extending health span and eventually lifespan. And this is what we did. This is uh, pretty complicated. These are proteomic tests where we track, track uh, more than 500 proteins at the same time. Uh, this is what we saw in the mice, and this is what we saw in the in the humans. It's pretty pretty similar, and I'll kind of uh, show you some of the details of this. But in general, what uh, we found is that treating the pathophysiology of aging can be accomplished with plasma exchange. So plasma exchange, we have demonstrated, reduces inflammation, so it attacks the inflammation process of aging. Uh, it affects cellular senescence because cellular senescence is characterized by the production of a variety of cytokines and other, uh, and other uh, chemokines that interfere with uh, the normal process of, of immunology and aging. So we remove those with the plasma exchange. And as, as I showed you, we affect the immunocompetent cells, so we fight immunosenescence. So with plasma exchange, we can accomplish all this in one shot. And we changed the old milieu, the old, the old uh, uh, plasma with, uh, with the new one. So the, the cells can function, can function properly. Now just imagine how complicated that is. And we achieve some of this with, with plasma phoresis. And uh, thinking that one pill or one drug can do that is just uh, kind of stupid, I think. So these are the effects that we have seen and experiments in humans 
have shown that removal of pro-inflammatory factors is possible, improving the balance of immunocompetent cells, providing potent antioxidant effect. Uh, we have uh, cases where joint stiffness and pain, which is common in older people, dramatically improves, improves liver function, which I'll show you in a second, improves renal function, and it definitely prevents infections. I think this, the last point is very important, especially uh, in lieu of what we have experienced over the last two years. Well, as I mentioned before, we started these experiments in 2017. And uh, you may remember the 2018, certainly in the United States, was one of the worst epidemics uh, uh, of the flu. Uh, a lot of people died that year. And our patients, our uh, volunteers in this study, uh, most of them are from the medical field. So they are exposed to a variety of infections through their everyday work. And many of them also travel extensively. Uh, I have people who come from Australia to do the treatments. And none of these people developed uh, COVID the, or took the infection to, uh, you know, without, without vaccine, obviously, there was no infections in our, in our group, which I think is, is remarkable because these are older people who uh, were the main victims of, of this uh, horrible pandemic. So, so I think that this is a very important uh, observation in our study, small, admittedly, and yet important. Uh, so, this is kind of a summary of TP capable of extending health span and eventually lifespan. Uh, we have shown through scientific studies that TP upregulates the immune system by removing pro inflammatory proteins and increasing anti inflammatory proteins. Uh, these and other properties of TP make it a powerful tool, tool for the prevention and treatment of age related diseases. Uh, our last paper published last uh, last week is available through my websites and uh, directly through me if you're interested. And I'll show you some of the results published in this paper. Uh, this is the combination of the different changes that we observed. And uh, on the top where it says stem cell proliferation, on the left-hand side, uh, we incubated stem cells with, with plasma from patients before TP. These are older individuals without a significant disease. Uh, what we observed that there was zero proliferation of cells. In fact, most of the stem cells died. If, if we took plasma right after the treatment and incubated the same cells, there was a, a dramatic proliferation of these cells. So uh, the lesson here is that it is not the aging of the cells. And this has been confirmed by recently by other uh, scientists, it is the milieu, it is the environment where these cells live that changes with aging and, and hinders the proliferation of, of tissues and stem cells. Here on the right hand side, as I mentioned, we remove pro inflammatory proteins, they go down, and anti inflammatory proteins go up. This was an interesting finding and a surprise finding for us. We didn't realize that. Uh, changing the balance of the, the proteome, changing the balance of the different proteins in the plasma uh, also increases some, some of uh, the proteins to a point that, that secures that the balance is, is uh, prevented. Uh, here is uh, on the lower left side is uh, what we have seen in patients who uh, have positive high sensitive C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory marker for a variety of diseases, including cardiac disease. As you can see here, with a single procedure, we can uh, remove, remove the, the, uh, this protein and keep it down for extended periods of time. Right now, we can keep it down for six, six months and maybe, maybe longer. So these are some of the results that are in this last article that I mentioned. Uh, I'll play you here another video from a patient who uh, had some liver problems when he came to us. He came for the anti-aging protocol, but we discovered that he had some liver abnormalities. Uh, 
This is my sixth TPE treatment, and I've had nothing but good side effects from the treatment so far. Mostly flu, uh, lower blood pressure, and improved uh, liver enzyme. My liver enzyme tests were out of range high for the last 30 years since I'm about 40. This is the first time that my AST and ALT came back in range. So I attribute that to this treatment. This is my sixth. And he is six, six months after the last treatment and his liver function is normal. Uh, we see this with uh, renal function as well. Patients with increased creatinine, we lower the creatinine and it, it stays within normal range for extended periods of, extended periods of time. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.